That's great. So, very welcome to this webinar. Um, I'm going to present to you an educational program that we have here at Bivers University uh, called Stronger Public Management. Um, like we all do in the beginning, uh, a few facts and figures. Uh, uh, Iceland, uh, as you know, is a, a big country in size, 1, 103,000 square kilometers, with, with only uh, 330,000 uh, population, which means that we have 3.1 person per kilometer, so, so quite sparsely populated. Um, but it is divided into regional municipalities that, that have, in a way, self-determination in some, some of the affairs. Um, however, 60% uh, of the population lives outside of, of Reykjavik area, which means that, that uh, it's even more sparsely populated where outside of the capital region. Um, so, this is the place where it, where it, where it all began. It's Bivrist University, in, practically in the middle of nowhere, a campus university. And uh, about the surroundings that this is in, we, we have the local authorities, and they are uh, divided into three categories, so to speak. They have the administration, uh, which includes monitoring public health and constructions, issuing license, etc. Uh, we also, or the administration, have the uh, welfare services, which is uh, social services and uh, the schools, preschools, music schools, youth and sport leisure, etc. And also some technical services, so uh, like the constructions of streets and pavements and uh, some of the security like firefighting, uh, the police, however, is, is state-run. So, so these are more or less the responsibility of the local authority, the municipalities, who we work with in, in this educational program. Um, so a little bit about the origin of the, the idea. Uh, I started digging a little bit further when I started writing this. Uh, the, the document on the good practice, and it comes uh, to light that the initial idea came in, in 2004 when some representative from the municipality of Borkabi went to a visit in Norway in, in the fall of 2004, uh, where they had in, in Haram an educational program for local public managers. There it was at the university and, and on a university level, so they started to think about it, if, if this would be something that we, they could do here in, in Borkabil, along with Bivros University, uh, since this is a quite peculiar situation here in Borkabil, because we have two universities in, in this very remote, or rather remote, area and sparsely populated. So we have the University of Bivros and also the agricultural universities. Um, so, the re other reason for, for this being an interesting project to start was that the, uh, the local authorities' managers are, are, in a lot of cases, managers that do not have a specific training in some of their responsibilities. Uh, the municipalities have been gaining more and more power, so to speak. Uh, they are more self-determined or, self or auto-determining. Uh, they have, like a little over 10 years ago, I think, when they, the municipality started to run the, the uh, elementary schools, for example. So, in a lot of the cases, the, 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 the managers uh, are, like, for example, school teachers that have become principals. Uh, or, or the kindergarten managers were kindergarten teachers, and they have just acquired the 
the knowledge to, to run the, the institution. So they would need more training in some cases on financial management, public law, uh, change management, or, or some of the, the, the important uh, issues that they have to address. Um, so this idea came up again, and, and uh, it was in after 2008, especially when uh, after the financial crisis in Iceland, the, the cutbacks in the public sector had, had uh, the effect that the, a lot of the educational programs that the municipalities had installed were, were cut down. Uh, so there were like a bit of a pressure and in, in, in conversation both with the uh, politician, politicians and administrators uh, that contacted us and, and had the idea on, on elaborating or designing a program especially for, for municipalities. So we decided to to dust the this idea and, and to uh, start to, to uh, design a, a program and decided to do that in collaboration with the municipality of Borkabil. So uh, we gave it the name Stronger Public Management, Sterkaris Dioxisla, uh, and started to, to work with Borkabil on, on developing it and trying to find out what was the most uh, imminent need. Uh, the objectives were to to try to improve the knowledge and the ability and skills of the manager in, in the public service. In both Beresburg and Borca uh, municipalities and other municipalities, uh, specialists in the field, teacher, etc. Then we decided to, to put up a, a program which would be uh, for two years uh, with uh, five courses. Uh, in the beginning, this was just like any other program at University, Pivers University, where uh, the students, or in this case, manager, would apply to attend to a program so they will be taking that as a case or example and work with the teacher on that. Uh, so we, what we do is we teach it in a, in a mixed method, blending learning. So it's it's partly on site. So we do always go to the municipality and have a one day workshop and lectures where we. Yeah, focus on the on the input from the teacher, but also get the people to to start to work on on some project that that they are actually working on at the time. Uh, then it's followed by six or five, six lectures, depending on on the teachers online, and they they do that uh, uh, by most of the times they meet. Um, all, all of the participants together and, and watch the lectures that are recorded and, and uploaded to our uh, learning management systems. Uh, so yeah, we, we, we kind of believe in, in doing real projects, uh, group projects that, that, that will help them to learn better what they are studying if they both have a real project in, in their hands and also also work in groups. So the Department of uh, uh, Continuing Education at uh, the University runs this program. Mm. So these are the courses that, that were decided that should be the focus uh, in the beginning. And um, well, this is more or less what most of the managers will have to deal with all the time. It's, it's human resource management, uh, public appearance and the media. This is also a part of partly a, a program that is designed to 
uh, enhance the auto self-esteem of, of the participants and, and just to bring the group a little bit together as a, as a team. Um, there is finance and financial planning, and public law. Uh, a lot of the well, a lot of the participants say that, that this one is very very effective, very useful to them. Public law. There's ethics and change management, and ethics is one of the things that everyone wanted to include, especially after the collapse in 2008. So we were. Uh, yeah, people were kind of looking at the mirror and wanted to, to include this, and I think that's absolutely absolutely essential. So, who who are the stakeholders in this case? I would say it's the the public managers themselves. Of course, they gain gain from this, and and staff, all staff working under these managers as well. Uh, politicians and local governments are, are, are definitely part of the equation, uh, and, and then in the end, of course, citizens and participating municipalities. There is uh, an increasing demand for professionalism, and, and uh, of course, the citizens wants the the municipalities to use their money wisely, the taxpayers, so. Now, if we talk about what is, what are the distinguishing characteristics in this um, educational program, I think it's probably the, the way it is delivered, the, the using of, of blended learning, uh, where we Mix traditional learning with the typical lectures and workshops and on site with them in direct contact with the distance learning. Uh, but also, I think what makes this uh, distinguishing is, is the fact that we each of the teachers has a, a meeting with the representative from the municipality before they they start to, to figure out what problems they are dealing with uh, at the moment with which the course and the, the workshops and the, the projects that they do um, can relate to. So being adapting it very well to the specific needs of the participants is a, is a very distinguishing characteristics. I would say. Um, well, acceptance. The, we have had already one municipality going through a two-year complete program like this, and they were very pleased with that. Uh, we have two municipalities now finishing in, in the last couple of semesters, so. Uh, and there are three more municipalities considering starting now in, in, the, in the next semester, hopefully. So in that way, that is that is has been accepted. Uh, but of course, we would need more participants and yeah, acceptance in in other areas such as the uh, formal education, etc. But when when we we plan this is is like I have said the the tailor made focus is very important I think to to study well what are the the what is the situation in each of the municipalities that participate uh, we we interview the managers before the program is is conducted we do that to to get this information. Uh, and then adapt it to the municipality specific needs. So in a way, the, the teacher is also a, a consultant. Uh, the case that I was talking about earlier, which is today, the change management uh, course that we have now in, in, in both Skagerfjörður and Hub, where the, the teacher is in both 
both of these municipalities going to address especially uh, a case that they are working on actually at the moment. Um, so regarding evaluation, to, and we have to be honest, we have not evaluated it very thoroughly or in a structured way. It's, it's going to be, especially now when these two municipalities finish, we're going to do a more extensive evaluation. Uh, but there was one survey that was run after the first program that was done not in a in a this tailor-made way, but put in with all municipal or a lot of managers from different municipalities participating, and, and we had a great great result from from that. Uh, but also the um, our department uh, after each course has a conversation with the the responsible person from the municipality and, and just to go over which which things went well and, and which didn't. Uh, we have had a, a great success with, with the last few uh, courses uh, like change management and, and public law. They were very pleased with that. Uh, well, Regarding recognition, I mean, partly the recognition is is that we have these municipalities participating, and some of them are, are willing to enter. Uh, however, we we don't get it recognized by the authorities, so this is not a part of the formal education system. This is not a, a university education. It's it's not a secondary upper school education either. So it's it's. Since it's so, uh, well, just like tailor made, we have to be very willing to adapt the program to the needs of the participants, which means uh, we will not have exams or 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 big projects. Mm -hmm. So, and it, it it has not been evaluated on the EQF level. So, but. It's something that would be really interesting to do in the future. And maybe this this project we are working on now can can help us do that. So that that's why we say that the the formal evaluation needs to be more extensive. We we have to evaluate in more detail each of the course, how it can be improved, and and also what what other courses we could offer. Uh, so we need to. To be able to offer these municipalities that are finishing, maybe in a in a year or two, uh, a new set of courses that they want to to participate in, or deepen their knowledge in some of the areas, we need to market it more directly and get more municipalities participating. Uh, the Reykjavik area, for for example, is. is we have not even touched that, but then again, I mean, we we are focusing on the smaller ones because this is particularly good for them. Um, so, yeah, like like I said before, the adaptability of the program to the municipalities, to the municipality needs uh, that that is part of this. This list we have here, um, as soon as you have more formal evaluation, we will be able to to um, design more variety of courses and adapt it even more to the municipality's needs. Um, then, of course, we would also have to to have it recognized more in in the in the official sector. I think. So, what would Make this more sustainable. I, I think if, if we were able to do what, what I mentioned before, in, in offering more courses, uh, put some more money in, into marketing, and uh, have have more municipality participate, and maybe somehow get it evaluated by the by the authorities and, and educational authorities, and maybe some of the umbrella. Association of uh, 
municipalities in Iceland to to have them help us to market it, etc., would be would be interesting. Uh, so, how could this be transferred uh, between regions, countries, etc.? I think what what you should consider if if somebody wants to try to to uh, implement this in in their region is is doing an, a gap analysis. Uh, what are their needs? I mean, we here in Iceland are focusing on on this uh, these su subjects because we know that the, the changes in the structure of the of the municipalities that the the fact the that the, the managers are having more responsibilities means that they need this 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 kind of education so in, in each region i suppose it's necessary to to figure out what would be the the needs um, to make sure that you have the right uh, learning management systems. We use MySchool, which is, in this case, quite efficient. Uh, we can upload lectures like this webinar onto a, a system where the students are logged in. They can communicate between themselves there and with the teacher. They can upload their assignments, etc. So, so that has to be in place. And, then, of course, the the staff or teachers, instructors have to have some knowledge. Well, a lot of knowledge in the in the sector that they have an experience from the from that from that area, so to speak. Because uh, we have found that in the case that where we, for example, uh, deliver a course on on management uh, with a teacher that comes from the, the business sector. Uh, the language and the the touch that is necessary is is, is very important. We sometimes, yeah, we could we have had uh, cases where where that was obvious that the experience from the public sector is is quite quite important. Um, and then, of course, you have to train the trainers, train uh, these teachers, um, having been sure that they can use the learning management systems, that they have studied well the, the group that they are going to, to teach. We are very lucky at, at Beirut University that we have a lot of uh, experienced uh, teachers that have both experience from teaching in, in universities and in, in other universities and on all levels uh, with great experience from, from their work life. So in our case, it's been quite, quite easy up to now, at least. Um, and finally, just a little bit of, of about contacts so or anybody who wants to know more uh, can just contact me and I'm the head of the continuing education and I can give you all the information that you want uh, yeah that's that's all from me regarding this educational program uh, if you have any questions you can just send them to the text box Okay. Uh, Charlie's asking the cost for for each participant. Uh, Charlie, I'm calculating into euros because you want to know the cost of the of the program. Uh, so. Uh, no. So we have, like it's 40, 50,000 kroners per student if we have like a uh, 10, no, 15 to 20 students normally participating in this. So that will be... 
that would be like 350 euros per per participant so it's 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 not cheap but yeah they get a lot of uh, quality education out of that <laughs> uh, okay so Yunnan you speak of his last slide 11 question is does this reflect support from the management of the participating authorities or is it more to do with the motivation of the students. Let's see, slide 11. Well, regarding the motivation or the participation uh, of the of the students, uh, this is like uh, specially designed for each municipality. So the municipality buys this course for the, its managers. Um, so most of the time we do even a contract with, with each of the participants and this is kind of uh, an obligation for them to participate so that's that's the dedication of course and and but also I mean they 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 do seem to be equal to participate yes How you dealt with the difference education and work experience background with the groups? Yes, the groups include both beginners and experts. We have had both cases. In one of the municipalities, we started with with very blended, very like from the mayor to the head of the of the kindergarten, etc. What happened there was that the most uh, highly educated part of the of the of the participants uh, participated in a limited way they followed it they went to the the on site meeting to participate to mingle with the people to to yeah be part of it but did not part participate fully um, so it it can be a problem but also it, it can get the group together and uh, they have talked about it that they know the language and they can speak to each other more easily now that because they they are all on the same page so I mm. hope that answers the the question regarding the the, the different backgrounds uh, so Mainly, we're all focusing on the middle managers or the managers, not maybe the, the most educated ones. So, did, do you find some subjects were more suitable for this type of learning than others? Mm. Well, I'm going to take the case of the of the change management for example in this this case the that is very suitable for this because they have first of all a session with the with the teacher the trainer instructor uh, then they have the online uh, focus and then they can further their their uh, knowledge and they do some projects with them for example in the case of the uh, public law we ended up having less online lectures, more on-site work, because that's what the students wanted, that's what the, the, the managers wanted, and the teacher was willing to do that. So, so we have to be flexible in this. So in, in that case, for example, is, is, is the difference between the subjects demands that we might have to change things a little bit. Well, we have a question from Charlie if we had had any reaction from private companies offering same kinds of courses uh, there are not that many of them that are dedicated to this and willing to go on uh, on site in the in the in the municipalities outside of Reykjavik and that can do something like this but you no know, I've not had no reaction but also we are partly a, a, a partly a private organization so so we have to uh, 
yeah, gain our funds also with 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 these kind of activities. So no, it's just one more player in the competition, I suppose. Okay, yeah, the flexibility is is quite important, and that's why it's it's uh, it has been easy to convince the participants that if I say whenever you want, however you want to do it, with how many how many people you want, so. It's very difficult for a, a 10, 15, 20 manager from a municipality participating all at once in an educational program. So it's almost impossible if you have to send people to Reykjavik or, or have them enrolled in a, in a, in a previously uh, planned program. So it, this, this helps definitely. So, if that's all, thank you. Thank you very much, everybody.